took the green mic, which is whatever. What are you going to do? Here's the thing about art. I'll say this. I'm not an art collector, but I have a lot of art that I've collected, but I'm not a collector. But whenever I've bought art it, at the low end or the high end, and not that high end, but you know, I've spent some money on art. It's the only thing I've not ever regretted buying ever. I've never regretted buying any piece of art, even when I've outgrown it and been like, I don't like this anymore. That's money I've never felt weird about spending, but everything else I ever buy, typically at, at some point you're like, I didn't need to buy that, you know? But there's something about buying art that, and, and, but I'm not buying art. Like collectors are buying art because they're, it's like stocks and shit. You know, they're like, they're manipulating it or they're fucking sitting on it and storing it and selling it, right? I mean, art is really personal. I'm always um, like trying to buy art for family, friends. I'm always trying to buy art for family and friends. Yeah. Like my brother, you know, I have three brothers, three sisters. And every single time I go back to their house, the art is never up in the house. It's like hidden in a garage. Like, or I buy you somewhere. art, motherfucker. Yeah, exactly. And oh, yeah, it's all right. The mic we, up a little yeah, closer. How's that? How's that? Better? You, do you, know, you don't even have cans on. How do you know? He can see. He's, this guy is amazing. He's watching. Oh, you He's can watching see the levels. Look, at, the look levels. at our levels right there, Guillaume. So listen, we are uh, once again, Powerful Truth Angels on another studio visit. Today, we're in the studio of the illustrious man only known as Guillaume. He's a one, he's a one name person <laughs> from this point on. Just Guillaume. And eventually, he'll be a letter. It might be G. It might be Y. It might be S. Nobody knows yet. But we're going to work on that. We're going to figure it out by the end of the show. No, anyways, this is Guillaume. What's your last name? Olivier. Guillaume Olivier. What? The, come on. Yeah. That, listen, you're good. <laughs> you're good to go. Don't worry about anything else. You already got the name. You got some art. You're good, bro. You don't even have to fucking do anything. You're, don't, don't even, and, you're you set. Know. Guillaume Olivier. Who doesn't want a Guillaume Olivier in their house <laughs> is the question. <laughs> Am I wrong? Come on. <laughs> when they, even when they hear like, because I feel like people buying, the people at the higher level buying art, right? And I'm just generalizing, but I'm guessing because I don't know anything. I, I don't know. I'm not, a, I'm not an art critic. You know, I might be a critic of other things. and I might have a lot of experience in other things, but art world, I just like what I see. I see what I like. I appreciate things. But I will say what little I know about real art collectors is that I would guess, let's say I don't know, what I, what I would guess is that a lot of them are buying things because they've been told that that's the thing to buy. They don't fucking know. So when someone comes up to, you know, like, the second wave of your sales after you're like, you know, the original tastemakers have bought it and they go, oh, you don't have a Guillaume Olivier? <laughs> this would look great over your, over your $26,000 couch. <laughs> you have a giant empty space. And he paints, he paints large scale, so I don't know. You better, you better get one. And then the FOMO kicks in and then someone's husband or wife is like, hey, we, gotta, we have to get one of these. And they go, yeah, just leave me alone. Buy it. Buy it. Give them give $325,000. That's nothing to start out with. You know, it's a good starting price for this budding artist. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, you say my name so perfectly. It's rare and kind of a nice treat because uh, <laughs> nobody ever knows how to say my name. <laughs> Loki, a, a beautiful name. Maybe one of the most beautiful names I've come across in a Man, long time. Thank you. You've been making me blush <laughs> since you got here. Well, <laughs> like, I call him how I see him, Guillaume Olivier. I call him how I see him. Um, so we're in the studio of the esteemed artist Guillaume Olivier. And uh, what, is, what is that? What kind of what kind of name is that? Where does that come from? Uh, French. It's French. But my mom is from L.A. Oh. My mom's from L.A. She got lucky enough to meet a French dude on her travels. And uh, they raised seven kids. And <laughs> I'm the middle neglected child that decided to make art and paint graffiti and do wild shit. And they let me do whatever, you know. She, so she, she, uh, she, she linked up with a wandering Frenchman. No, he was a military dude. Oh, okay. Like, uh, Army base. Army brats. Army in Africa, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh. He was living in Rhodesia. Oh, wow. And uh, riding his horse around, you know. You're the middle of seven. Yeah. Now, you were ignored? Is that what you said? Well, you know, when you're the middle child, you're kind of, uh, you know, your older siblings are getting in trouble. Your younger siblings are getting in trouble. You can kind of get away with doing whatever you want. Right. right. Like, they just kind of expect the older siblings to raise you. Yeah. And they expect you to raise the younger siblings. Right. There's kind of a chain of command within a big family. Yeah, there's there's studies been on been done on this, and I think it's like I'm probably gonna mangle this too, but I think that the first kid is, I think the middle kids usually do the best. I could be wrong. You, you, I wish we could fact check this. I wish there was another one of you. I where the fuck is Ed? Why is Ed not here? Ed, fucking Ed, Ed. Hey, asshole. Fucking Ed, dude. Ed. <laughs> Guess what, Ed? You know what? When I see Ed on the mats next time, I'm gonna not be so nice. 
Ed goes to my gym. We do jujitsu together. Oh, okay. And he's my intern now. And he doesn't want to come. He doesn't want to come shoot with us anymore. I know. I lo- Ed, Ed's awesome. I love that. I mean, but I'm un- still going to fucking tweak you. It's uncomfortable being in front of camera. It's my first time. I, I don't do this often. You That's know? fine. So you got to just you gotta cool your nerves, relax a little bit. This is just, it's just two guys talking. We, we, looked at this, we looked at the hazy sun, sunset, non-sunset. We looked at the skyline. Now we're in the studio. <laughs> so the, the way it's supposed to go is uh, the first kids, I think the middle child sometimes might do the best. The first kids where they fuck everything up. The middle kid, let's say there's three or four. The middle kid is where they kind of like ease up a little bit, but are kind of parenting. And the last kid is when they completely let go. They're like, who gives a shit? Oh, let, yeah. let that fucker run free. So the middle might get the best, might get the best of it, might get the best of the parenting. Now, were your folks, did your folks stay together? Oh, yeah, they're still together. They're still I was, together. I was at my parents yesterday for Father's Day. Oh, no My way. dad's badass. My mom's awesome. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, like right wing, left wing family, uh, you know, Who's great, great. Conver- I mean, my dad's a military dude. You oh, know? yeah. Yeah, so, I know where I know where, where his bread's buttered. Yeah, he wrote a book called Soldier of Fortune. So he's a, like, uh, no, no, military, military. Oh, wow. Yeah. Was he a mercenary or something? Yeah. No. Yeah. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. <laughs> dude. And my mom was just a hippie riding her motorcycle from North Africa to South Africa. No way. Yeah. She got picked up by, I mean, this is how I've heard the story. Two French military dudes are like, hey, come stay at the camp with us. Yeah. It's like, all right. Full hippie Goes style. Goes to the camp. My dad's, you know, the, the leader, general. Yeah. He's like, all right, you brought two American girls. Let me talk to them first and make sure it's okay for them to stay here. Yeah. <laughs> and what do you know? You know, I think, gosh, I, I can't even tell you, maybe 30 years now they've been together. What's your dad's name? Patrick. God, what a fucking rascal. And my mom, you know. Constance classic american this is amazing you, you, said, you, you hear about these stories like if i saw this in a film i'd be like oh, okay this is really really cute mm-hmm. but this is real polar opposites hippie right-wing mercenary well probably not right-wing at the time just a mercenary right yeah guns blood and guts peace love and cannabis come together <laughs> Create one of seven, one of them being Guillaume Olivier. Patrick is a rascal because let me tell you, Patrick's whole thing was like, listen, guys, you brought these like hot American, not to, you know, I'm, I'm assuming your mom's hot. <laughs> you, brought these, <laughs> you brought these hot American girls to the camp and Patrick's like, let me just make sure that they don't have lice, that they're nice, nice ladies. And what he was really doing was like, I'm going to get, I'm going to get first crack. That's what I'm assuming was happening. And but they he fucking did in fell in love. Yeah. Holy yeah. shit! Love is love. Love exists, you guys. It's real. I and they raised they raised all of us in France. I was born in France, but I moved here when I was nine, and I took uh, you know, I had the the ths problems with the ths. What's ths? Like this, that, there, oh. this, these, <laughs> right, like, right. You know, they right, had to right. teach us and give us speech therapy to like make sure we were Americanized properly. Oh yeah. Even though my mom, you know, my grandma worked at, you know, she, she's American. I, I feel more American than French sometimes. Most of the time, but my name's Guillaume, so people love uh, giving me jabs about it. Bro, he's a French <laughs> artist in L.A. named Guillaume Olivier. I just think, I think at this point you could fucking shove paint up your ass and fart on a canvas and you still get rich. <laughs> this dude's destined for greatness. You're good to go, bro. Don't, just relax. Don't, don't be so hard on yourself. Everyone's telling me not to be so hard on myself. I'm just going to pass it on to you because I got to be hard on myself. So listen, I have a theory too about, it sounds like you're the middle child of seven so maybe there was like and i'm not saying maybe that you just you didn't get enough attention i wasn't touched enough i think yeah you know i have problems with that with my girl you know she's like why don't you like being touched or yeah. hugged or spoon I'm like, i don't know maybe it's being the middle child you know you just but you think the anti the antidote for that would be more hugging and spooning yeah maybe but you're not used to it no I think I had the same thing, but I'm more, I am more uh, touchy than not. I'm on the other side of it. So everyone, everyone reacts the same way. I mean, everyone reacts differently. Sorry. Right, right, right. Like you need more of it now, right? When I'm, when there's someone that I want to be hugging and touchy with, I'm all over them. Right. Not in the, not in the gross way, <laughs> but like I'm, a, I'm, 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 listen, I'm just going to, I'm going to come out here and say this. I'm really going to, I'm really going to put myself out there. Sometimes I'm known to be the little spoon. I like to be a little spooned. And sometimes, you know, when someone's in my bed and I'm the little spoon, there's two things going on. One is I like being held from behind by a woman, but I also like to be able to turn my back on her <laughs> because sometimes I just like, I want to be held, but I also don't want to like, I want to, cause I, I think the, I think the little spoon gets the better 
of the deal because you get to like breathe out into the world and the big spoon has to breathe in the back of your neck. Right. And the big spoon has a face full of hair. Face full of hair. You know, and your arm's yeah. stuck. It's pretty uncomfortable. And I think it's really funny because there's no, I mean, I'm, I've never dated a woman that's bigger than me. And it's so funny because they're smaller than me. So it's like, a, it's like I have a koala bear on my back, <laughs> you know? So anyone out there, any women out there that are, are into being uh, the big spoon, hit up Jason and he'll, he'll vet you just like Guillaume's dad did and take you for himself. Do you have a dog? I do have a dog, yeah. I have a dog named Omar. Is that part of the trio for the big spooning? Does the dog get in there too? Do you the, end up being in the no, middle the sometimes? No, the dog, Omar stays at the foot of the bed. And, you know, I will say this. Recently, I've been having a lot of problems sleeping. And Omar, Omar's very old. Omar's, um, the, you know, she's, she's kind of, uh, <laughs> I've been saying this for a long time, but she's officially kind of on the way out. Oh, her name is Omar. Her name is okay, okay. Omar, yeah. And one thing that she does, because she has a skin thing, is that she'll just lick herself all night. And it's this noise. It's like, and sometimes it'll wake me up at two in the morning and then I can't go back to sleep. And I become very resentful of the dog. So recently the past two nights, I've made her sleep in the living room for the first time in like her entire life. I've had this dog for 16 years. I've never, I've, she slept in my bed. Wow. And now I'm like, because I'm like, listen, I got to get up at six, fucker. Don't lick yourself at two and wake me up. And then I'm up till three or four watching fucking Instagram. Like I can't, I can't have it. I have I got things to do, Guillaume. You know what I mean? That's what I was saying. I mean, we, I, I've been here since 7 today, and I was like, man, this guy's supposed to be here at 5. What's I know, going on? I know. I apologize. I apologize. I'm I, an early person. I By 5, 6, I like to be home, decompressing. You're an early bird. Yeah, my brain works. Like, right when I wake up, I just go. Like, I just, I don't even stretch. I just get up and start my day. Oh, really? What do you do? What do you, what's, your, what's your beginning of your day like? Well, I've been big spooned all night, right? Or doing big spooning, <laughs> yeah. wake up and big spooning all night. Usually, like to go on a run, exercise, something, okay. get like the blood flowing. Yeah. But uh, man, my life's been pretty crazy recently. So every day has been pretty different. I mean, we are in Idaho with Sita. Oh yeah. Last week, installing. Yeah, we we're installing art for a billionaire. Okay. I think the guy who owns the Brand Museum up in uh, Glendale. So you guys were there just installing? We we're installing. I think it was some insurance scheme based around a fire because we understood that the fire happened because of a squirrel so a single squirrel destroyed this whole house and they had a bunch of badass paintings that were getting fixed the past few years so we we're like yeah fuck okay, it let's let's go up there and install some art in this amazing house in sun valley idaho oh it's so funny that like you guys like see like they don't have no idea who you guys are like, like they they didn't even know who cedo was or who yeah. we were they didn't do anything they didn't do any background they're like and they made him drive the truck 18 hours <laughs> what? with like, yeah, a crazy art collection in the back. They're like, yeah, just drive it. So on the way he was painting. Stop. Yeah, he's doing graffiti. Yeah, yeah. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. He's got like $16 million worth of fucking paintings in a truck and he's pulling over to do graffiti. And shit. We flew, so we're just waiting for him like, what the fuck? And we couldn't figure it out. So we go on his Instagram and oh yeah, what do you know? He's painting and catching tags. What, <laughs> what maniacs? What maniacs would entrust... Not no offense to Sita, but like Sita's an active graffiti writer. Yeah, you're giving this like he could have he could have pulled off the heist of the century. You know what I mean? I mean that discussion happened right away, and everybody's like, "You guys yeah. are like, <laughs> can we can we? Get, is there really a way we could get this off and like fence this shit?" Um, so you get up. This is interesting too. I, li I like to talk to people about their routines, and uh, you get up. You do a, you do something physical. You do some exercise. Yeah, I don't like to eat in the morning or Me barely drink anything. I'm not a coffee person. Yeah. If, if I'm working or traveling, yeah, hell yeah. Like that coffee becomes a ritual. You're like, yeah. Okay, once the coffee's settled, we can get to working. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, just I'm at the age right now where all I want to do is kind of How old are you? 33. 33. Yeah. So, good, it's a good age. You know? Solid age. You still have a lot of testosterone in your body. I think so. Yeah, you're still doing good. If not, I'll get a replacement therapy. I've heard that's the hot new shit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm waiting for the perfect drug. And then I'm just going to go ham on something. You know, when it, when it's fully leveled out and they figure out like what the best, most holistic one is, I'm going to like start yeah. not test. Yeah. Like it'll be a collagen peptide. It'll be whatever the new thing is. At some point, I'm just going to click into it. Not right now. I'm good. I'm doing fine. But I'll, eventually. What, some, what do you do when you wake up in the morning? Okay. First thing is I get up. I'll be completely honest. I get up and the intention is to meditate. Okay. I do 20 minutes. I do TM, right? Sometimes I get up and I I procrastinate for 10 minutes because I have to get to the gym ideally by seven. Oh, shit. So I get up at six. 
I do this every morning. This is another like, this is a crazy tick where I get up at six and I'm not quite awake. So I get on Instagram or something. I start fucking around a little bit. Mm -hmm. I burn about 10, 15 minutes to put myself behind the eight ball. So when I meditate for 20 minutes, then I have like my, I'm literally five minutes from the gym and I get there and I'm like, I get there right at seven. I should be getting there at six fifty. You know, I should be getting there and stretching, but I get there at seven. I do my workout. What's your workout like? Do you stretch it? Like you just said you stretch. Uh, but. I, I do like a, I do, I do, I have like a program I do for weights. I do a weightlifting program. Some of that is like, there's some stretching and like bike, you know, there's some warm up. So I do my weightlifting and then at eight o'clock I get into jujitsu class and I do an hour of jujitsu. Uh, sometimes I go over and do a few more rolls and that's like a typical workout. Uh, and I don't have anything, but like usually I just have water. Mm. I don't like to eat. I eat it like 12 or one. I don't like to eat right away. I like to kind of go on an empty stomach. It keeps me a little more. Yeah, it keeps the energy going. The second you have that first bite, you kind of start to slow down, right? I think so. Yeah, yeah I feel like if I, there's like a there's like a ratio of like the perfect amount of the the perfect small amount of food to where you're not energy depleted gives you energy. You know what I mean? Like it's like if you eat too much, you're you, you don't feel good. If you eat too little, you're fucking you're just like not you don't have the juice. But if you get to like just the right small amount, sometimes you can really. I find I can just really get into it. I like to give myself like a gift, you know, once I've done a certain amount of things like yeah. worked out, stretched some canvases, painted, and yeah. I'm like, all right, now I'm starving. And once you finish that task, you know, like you start to be hungry, but you're not hungry until the task is done. I mean, for me, you say you delay that you delay, the I delay pleasure. The, the pleasure. Yeah. 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 That's good. I mean, the thing is, I've, and t you know, I've only, I only do these things because I've lived the opposite way also. I've my the pendulum has swung so far the other way where I've been just like gorging myself on everything I can imagine. I know what's up with that. I, I enjoy that so much. Maybe like, you know, once every 10 days, just plopping and just being destructive and gluttonous and eating a ton of shit and feeling terrible and then getting back into the routine the day after. Yeah. Well, I haven't had a, uh, I haven't had a sweet item I've had like sugar-free chocolate and honey, but I haven't had a sweet item since February. I'm on a streak. So I haven't had a cookie, a piece of cake. I've gone to weddings. I've had birthdays. I've just, I've just been like, you know what? Like I had my, my that, production. That's impressive. That's this, crazy. This is it. I'm impressed. I'm impressing myself. My production I had me, cheesecake yesterday. <laughs> bro, they sent me, my production company sent me a, a giant, beautiful chocolate cake. It weighed like 30 pounds. I got it. They, they delivered it to me. as like, you know, here you go. Happy birthday. I opened up this cake and I've been so far off the sugar that I was like, I looked at the cake and I was like, I don't even want it. I'm like, who am I? I don't, I don't need, I didn't, I didn't, it wasn't even a fight. Usually I'm fighting. I'm like, oh, I got to have one more cookie. Blah, blah, blah. I didn't even want the cake. And I took it and I had, I had some friends eat it. And I was like, I, I didn't even give a shit. So like, I'm in a very bizarre place, you know? Are you being absent from fruit? and shit like that no too? i have fruit i fruit. had fruit okay. yeah yeah no i got i was on a i was on a uh, a walk today i saw the fruit man i laced myself up with the fucking whole shit i had to get, i had to get fruit <laughs> the tahin up. Too? They put the oh tahin. Yeah, yeah 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 all that shit yeah tahin and the fucking the the lime juice nothing better really um so what do you and then when you have breakfast or it's probably lunch by then what do you have that's hard because the starvation like you just instantly are super hungry. Yeah, so yeah, you're yeah. trying to find something. Like today we were scrambling around the arts district. So we went to one spot. Ah, oh, there's too much bread. Ah, oh, these salads look shitty. And then uh, there's this market right here that has pho in Little Tokyo. Mm -hmm. It's like a mall with a bowling alley. Mm. So oh, yeah. There. Yeah, yeah. Had some, had some pho. So you're not, it's not like you're tripping on, you just eat whatever. You're not yeah, tripping. I'll eat whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I can hear a little bit of French in your, you have, a, you have the slightest like 9% French accent. It's like this weird flat, like, it's not weird. It's just like this flat, like, uh, there's like this thing in there. It's like, oh, eh. but, the, but maybe you should, maybe you should turn it up a little bit. Be good for sales. Maybe. I mean, <laughs> I think nine year old, like is a pretty tender age, you know? Yeah. You learn French, you move here, you yeah. Americanize, you know, Chuck E. Cheese is mind blowing pools. All this <laughs> Chuck stuff. E. He said, Le Chuck E. Cheese. Oh, when my parents told me we were moving to the U S they're like, oh, you're, what do you think? And all I could picture in my head was Chuck E. Cheese and pools. I don't yeah. know why. Yeah. <laughs> the fucking american dream yeah yeah i guess i'm living it all i mean yeah that right there the, that's a pool painting that's my oh, yeah. grandma's we're gonna, house we're gonna get into this art and what and how, the american dream for sure oh, i'm still <laughs> i'm still i'm still so interested in just like the the little uh the nuances of people's lives and uh the peccadillos and also the whole thing about being the middle child of seven 
not get enough attention, not getting, it doesn't sound like you had, it doesn't sound like you're getting your head crushed, but it sounds like you were neglected a little bit, overlooked, maybe overlooked. Yeah. You missed a few hugs. Maybe you're a little bit of a malcontent. Maybe a little, maybe like, you know, cause you were, can I, can we talk about your graffiti career at all? Can yeah. we talk about, okay. Yeah. So you, what time did you, what, what, at what point in your life, because I have a theory about dysfunction, right? My theory is this, and I speak from experience is that if you go in, if you, if you grow up in a home that's dysfunctional, it's a pressure cooker. And in that pressure cooker, you either, you have to escape somehow. And if you have the capacity, you're going to escape into like your fantasy world. Or you become creative and you start drawing or you start making music. And like a lot of a lot of artists and musicians come from these dysfunctional places where they're forced into an alternate reality. Now it doesn't always get work that way, because I'd say like that's probably 10%. And I think the other the other 90 end up being fucking just complete, you know, fuck ups in different ways. Or maybe some of them become like wild stockbrokers or just like, you know, <laughs> end up, you know, maybe that's how the Koch brothers are invented. I'm actually they were. I heard I read a podcast. I heard a, I listened to a podcast about the Koch brothers. They were raised by like a Nazi nanny. It's insane. Um anyway, so but I think that like dysfunction is a pressure cooker and it builds, you know, it creates coal and sometimes that coal gets turned into a diamond, but a lot of times it just ends up being coal and you burn out. Uh and and sometimes you burn out and you come back, you know, which I've experienced too. But um and I think that what you're talking about seems like, you know, it seems like you were like, you weren't, tra- you weren't quite in the pressure cooker, but you're in a little bit of a crock pot. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah because nobody, nobody starts doing graffiti. Well, I, maybe, no, maybe not nobody, but I think most people that do graffiti probably do it because like they're missing something. Right. Because as a graffiti writer, I realized that I, I somehow was so enmeshed in it that I believe that me tagging on shit was supposed to happen and anyone stopping me from doing it was like, f- like they're wrong. Mm. I'm right. So I need to get up. Right. So if like, if I get arrested, it's like, fuck them, fuck the cops, fuck the house, fuck the, fuck the liquor store. This is about me getting up. Right. Mm. And like, I think that that, that kind of like, that kind of perspective comes from something. And like, I think, and I, and I talk about this too. It was like, I felt like, and I think I talked to Sita about this is like, I think I felt invisible until I did graffiti. And then when I did graffiti, I was like, Oh shit, that's proof of life. I was there. I was there two nights ago at that wall at three in the morning. And I was actually, I scribed that parking meter too. So like, it made me feel like I was real. Mm -hmm. Like I wasn't immaterial. You know what I mean? I mean, especially in a city or a country that you're an alien to, Mm. you know, like I, I moved, uh, to when I can Parthenia was the corner house when I can Parthenia is like Canoga Park. Yeah. Valley. Yeah. Know? Yeah. Yeah. So there were, there were like stesic tags in the backyard, MTA, all that kind of shit. Yeah. But I was nine years old. I think it's really, really natural. Like you said, you just like, you're starting to feel significant or important in your alley, you know, you just start yeah. in your alley. And then, so I like to say it's a natural response to an unnatural environment because, mm-hmm. you know, I moved to that block and it's just freeways, you know, like something so uncomfortable and alien to me. And growing up in France, we grew up next to a forest. Yeah. You know, it was very natural and normal. Yeah. yeah. So when I moved here, I guess that's the best way I fit in. And then even the high school I went to, like nobody really painted. You know, LA's got this weird, you know, I guess closed off thing with graffiti. It's very secret. It's yours. It's personal, but it makes you feel really good. Yeah. Like I even, I tricked, you know, the, the, I speak English fine, uh, fluently. And I was in ESL for two years at my public high school because they're like, oh, your name's Guillaume. You should be in ESL. I was yeah. Like, oh, fuck yeah. This is going to be so easy. So I <laughs> rode through two years of high school. <laughs> and at the same time, I was painting graph. And, you know, so, uh, yeah, I mean, I think graffiti is pretty important to feeling significant in a place that maybe doesn't really care or want. Yeah. And maybe that's the same thing with the family, right? Being a middle child is kind of, very similar and aligned in a way. Yeah, you might get lost a little bit and you need to kind of define yourself in some manner. Right. And a lot of times it's not, you know, graffiti is like, it's not the worst thing in the world you could do. It's not the best thing in the world. You know, there's other wildly crazier things you could do out in the streets. And uh, there's other things that, you know, you could also join the fucking soccer team, but it really wasn't for me or for you. Mm -hmm. You know, Um, I don't think there's a lot of, there haven't been a lot of team sports players that are also graffiti writers. It's a different kind of animal, you know. Maybe nowadays there's so, there's a wider range of, uh, mm-hmm. you know, we have a bodybuilder in our crew now, <laughs> and we have a 
<laughs> that's somebody you want on your crew for we sure. Have, we have a guy from the Midwest who's literally like a, a professional bodybuilder. And I'm like, that's fucking sick. Because that would have never that would have never happened a long time ago. Because it's graffiti is spread out so much to where it's like everyone has access to it all. And it's like now you have just people who are just like, you know, I don't know. Like there's gonna be like there's gonna be a guy who's just like, I'm gonna fucking I'm gonna pilot, I'm an airplane pilot. I also am like up in every country, you know. Uh, but anyways, I digress. Oh, yeah, like a scientist, I met some dude in the Bay who was like a, you know, st- he was doing stem cell research. And he's a fucking graffiti writer. No fucking way. Yeah. That's yeah. fucking and hard. He's and he's like the king of kings, you know. Really? Yeah. Oh, you have to tell me off air who that yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. He's awesome. Oh, shit. That's so you, fucking sick. Yeah. See, that's what, see, like, I, I feel like, man, because, you know, I feel like graffiti writers, and of course I'm biased, but like, like we had this meeting, it's a 30 year reunion and there are some fools there that are just like, they're like, I'm a fucking lifer. Like their, their attitude was like, fuck you. I'm writing graffiti forever. And I'm like, there is nothing more. Like, they're just like, they don't give a fuck about the accolades or like shows or the tie-ins or like, they're just like, I'm a, this is it. And they've dedicated their entire lives, their bodies, their souls to graffiti. And it's to a thing that like is so specific in particular. And like, it's such a sub, it's such a subdivision of society. And like, people don't really understand what it is. Mm -hmm. You know, like the general public, we think, we think, you know, we all, we're all connected to all these graffiti writers and artists. And we think that's the world. That's not the world. The world is a bunch of people doing some terrible job and going home and seeing graffiti and being like, uh, I don't know. They don't know the difference between a fucking toy or a king. Like they can't, (laughs) you know, they're just like, whatever. And like, there's a whole goddamn society and lineage and uh, pecking order and fucking system of like, you know, like there's like seeing someone that can execute an an amazing tag and throw up is like, it's amazing. Right. You look at that. You're like, dude, that's, but then it's real ass shit too, you know, like you try to not paint anymore. When I was 18, I was like, fuck, I got to stop. You know, I'd been doing it since I was 10. Yeah. My older brothers and shit, they would make me go run around. And They were writers too? They were more like, uh, like anarchist. Oh yeah. But when I was 18, like I, I didn't, yeah, I, I, when I was 18, I wanted to stop painting. Like I was fucking done. I like the fumes eating at you and shit. That's why I'm always impressed with people that are doing it for the rest of their lives. Like, dude, that's fucking crazy. You're still dealing with beef and you got two, three kids and you have to go like fight well, somebody, get down and do that kind of shit. Yeah. Well, that's also, a- but also like if you've been doing graffiti since you're 15 and now you're 40 and you're dealing with beef, that's a different like you're you're a grown man. So beef is beef is not like you're fucking a, a sloppy fight when you're fucking 22. Beef is like a 40 year old man. A 40 year old man's beef is different. Like there's there's some experience there. So like, and I think that you know, yeah, it's a commitment, and it's also like you know, it's like a it's 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 just some. It's only done for the sake of it itself. Like the the people doing graffiti are doing graffiti to do graffiti for other graffiti writers. Right. And that's it. And that's like it's such a fucking. I have the utmost respect for those guys. Like, I love those fucking guys, you know? Like, I, I can't do it anymore because I'm fucking, because I want to, like, I want to get up in the morning and, like, exercise. And I'm fucking, you know, um, I'm, I'm just, like, I'm retired. You know, I just can't do it. And I'm not going to, and I don't do things unless I'm really going to do them. I want to. Oh. I want to paint. Like, I'll probably paint a wall with some of the homies, like, here and there. But, like, I can't go out. I wanted to go out bombing in COVID. But I know if I open that door... <laughs> I'm, if I open it, I'm not going to, I'm just, I'm obsessive. I won't stop. And I'll just be like, and I'm going to start, then I'm going to be carrying a marker and I have a scribe in my pocket and I have three markers and then I'm walking around with a little pack and I'm tagging on shit. And it's like, and even your thought process changes. You're like, fuck, I got to paint that spot. Like you can't sleep at night until you paint the spot. You, you got to paint the spot. And then I'm fucking racking. And then I'm like, it's like, I just, I know myself. I'm a mess. I have to, I have to, I have a thin, I have a, I have guardrails. I establish myself. I stay in the guardrails and everything is good. Step outside the guardrails and it's not good. And transitioning is hard as fuck. Like, I mean, I'm really, really privileged and lucky to be in a situation where I got to learn through graffiti, through graffiti to meet somebody who was like, hey, you like painting big shit. You like doing murals. You like evolving. That, yeah. Like our whole crew was based around evolution and painting more, you know, Charles crew. Yeah. And uh, like trying to be better and learn and, and evolve. And uh, this dude, uh, Argon or Daniel, he like put me onto painting advertisements what were they having you do like roll out the carpet put tarps on top of cars so when the paint falls off the buildings it's not getting on cars yeah like san francisco so tenderloin shit there was you know crackhead shits everywhere oh yeah yeah nothing but worse than human. that's the one thing that human shit is the, yeah it's the, the one worst. thing that people don't understand about writing graffiti is you come in contact with a lot of human shit 
And let me tell you, it's fucking disgusting. <laughs> you have you have a you have a different taste for 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 you have a different take on the houseless situation when you're stepping in people's actual human shit. It's fucked up. And when you do it, it's I'll take dog shit any day. Any day I'll take take a hot dog turd over a human turd. Anyways, um <laughs> I digress. So organize everything, plan everything, have everything set up. And that's even like when I'm in the studio now, I, I you know, I, I order my linen or canvas from Belgium. I've like found the guy I really like, and then I make my bars myself and I, I plan all the processes, even the design process. I plan that shit out. I mean, you have and, to and right? conceptually, this... you got to think conceptually, you know, for months, years before you start like committing to being stoked on your artwork, I think. Yeah. I'm conceptually, really... you got to figure out what the fuck it, what are we, what are you trying to say? What right? are you trying to say? What yeah. story are you telling? That's uh that's crazy because mm -hmm. you can't, you know, and, and, and there are artists who can just sit down and be like, you know, there's that's that wild kind of willy nilly shit and that works too. But like, obviously this stuff is, I mean, you can't paint like this without, you know, like I was, I was over at Mario's earlier and I'm like, fuck, you have, you got to, he has to think about shit so far in advance because everything's like consensual. Oh, it's laid insane. Out. It's, it's like, like the most insane. Yeah. It looks crazy, but you're like, dude, this is, and I, I can't like, and also his studio is like fully just everything's wired the fuck in like there's nothing out of place right it's, it's just it's super like, organized super right? organized, like yeah. tetris in there and like i look at that and i'm like it's it's hot it's fucking hot like i i don't i i'm not that guy i'm more just like sloppy and messy and shit and like his shit is like <laughs> you know his shit's his shit's wired in and i feel like your work too is like you know you're not going to just you're not going to just roll out of bed and start painting something like this or that. You know, you really got to think about this. And I think we should start talking about some of your work. And I think, I think that also what's interesting is like conceptually how you have to, the, all the thinking you have that has, like you have to do think, you have to do research, right? You have to like, oh yeah, right? There's a whole fucking thing. And it's here. like, in, in the end, it's commitment. Just being committed to like something you really fucking believe in or see or you're like destined for. Yeah. Like, I don't, you know, I, I'm pretty committed to just, painting and I, I think living in Oakland for you know 12 15 years in San Francisco I kind of learned like what to do and what not to do there's like you know staying quiet just building your body being conceptual understanding that you're a little late to the game some people learn how to paint and learn the gallery game and all that shit when they're young as hell right yeah I think yeah it's, I mean and now I've kind of think I think I'm honing it in but I'm already you know, some days I wake up and I'm like, fuck, I just want to paint a landscape, something beautiful and relaxing. Yeah. You know, because during COVID is when I really started painting. Yeah. Like my back was all broken and I had to lay, I, I slipped a disc in my back, mm -hmm. which is the worst pain ever. Yeah. And you can't walk for four or five months. Yeah. So I was just laying on the ground in my spot in the bay and uh, just going through all my photos that I had taken from walking around the city and my trips and shit. Yeah. And then I would just deconstruct, reconstruct. And at the same time, there was something going on with COVID where everybody was deconstructing, reconstructing their lives. What's going on? What does the city look like? I haven't been outside. Yeah. So it was fun as hell to think conceptually with like shit that I had from all my trips, like going to Vegas or like things that I think are really hilarious. Yeah. Like American maximalism, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Vegas is the definition of that. So I really 100%. hone in on that kind of shit. Yeah. And uh, like, yeah, b building a body of work around that was really really fun but strenuous and then sometimes you look at the art and you're like man I, I committed to doing this shit i don't even like this painting after you already started you just got to finish what you start yeah you know and now i'm, I'm stoked because i got about 30 paintings that are all this like maximal you know uh, american cultural paintings and I'm, I'm stoked to transition into something new uh with this new studio here and, and it's probably going to be oh we'll see i think the, the the setting your life up and being really organized with being tactical with painting problem. Maybe it comes from middle child, nine years old, deciding to do graffiti and like planning spots out. I don't know. I don't know, man. Like I, I think don't... like having intention, being older, a little wiser, you know, mm -hmm. not being as silly. I mean, my twenties, I was running around a lot, traveling, just wanted experiences and take yeah. things in. Yeah. Now I'm kind of honing it in and like taking all those experiences and trying to, you know, I think every every time that I do, I experience this with doing graffiti, I experience this with like maybe anything I do creatively, the process is like, here's the idea, here's a sketch, sick, this is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. Then you get into it and then somewhere in the middle you're like, I don't want to do this. <laughs> this is like, this is annoying because you're doing a lot of like, you end up just doing like, 
you're just doing hard labor at some point, right? You're just like shading something or just filling something in. And you're like, it's not, this is my experience. I'm like, this isn't working. Uh, this, and then, and then you get to the end of it and you get to the, and you, and you step away from me like, Oh, it, it worked finally. But the process is always like, you know, I had the same thing with graffiti and even, you know, I was a tattoo artist briefly and it's like, you have the sketch and that's fun. And then in, everything in between the sketch and the final product is dog shit. It's just cause you're like, it's like you're laying pipe or something or like you're fucking, and it sucks. And you, Roofing, and, but you know? since you committed, you have to finish it, right? You have to finish it. Yeah. You're like, yo, I committed to painting that shit. I sketched it out. I've been doing this forever. You just got to keep going and putting your head down and going through shit. Yeah. And I think, yeah, I was talking to my buddy earlier about painting in the studio. I mean, it's 90% prep labor, figuring out your materials, getting everything ready. Painting is the easiest part. That shit's fun as hell. Right. That shit's a blast. I just That's put fun. podcasts on and yeah. I just fucking flow. Yeah. You know, but prepping everything, being conceptual. I mean, I go home after this and I'm going to, keep thinking, organizing, putting things together, sketching. My girl's had enough. Like she's like, dude, you got to fucking turn it off. No, and I can't turn no, it off. You can't turn it off. Like it's... it almost turns on crazier when yeah. everybody's slowed down. You know, the yeah. collective consciousness is quiet and I, ideas start to pop up and I just keep it going. You d listen, sorry <laughs> to whoever's, whoever is the mate of an artist or someone that's obsessed with something creatively at like a, at a, at a higher level, uh, it doesn't, this sounds corny and woo woo, but like you're, you're at the mercy of like whatever's fucking flowing through you and you can't say no to it ever. Like I'm always, you know, whatever. Like I'm, I'm always in my notes and blah, blah, blah. I'm always thinking of things I can't stop. And if I ever have an idea, mm -hmm. I have to put it down. Cause that might be something that might work later. Mm -hmm. The same with you. I'm sure you're thinking of things. You're like, you know, you're at dinner, right? And you're like, Oh fuck. I figured out like what, what gargoyle I'm going to paint. You know what I mean? Like, but then you, you kind of want like, I, I, I want criticism. Like I'm really into criticism. Yeah. I want people to be like, dude, no, like, yes, build this, do that. Yeah. And I kind of hope that I can get it from my girl and I love it or death. She's great. Yeah. But sometimes she asks me, you know, let's plan a day when we can go over a like, criticism right. day or whatever. Cause I think a lot of people that go to school, you know, MFA programs, all that kind of stuff. That's what you get 24 seven, right? You're yeah, you school, get crit getting, and all that shit. Yeah, you're yeah. getting critiqued, you're yeah, getting yeah. your shit, you're honing in. Yeah. For us being, you know, self-taught, you, you don't get that. So it's really nice. We also, we also come from a place too where like in graffiti, it's like criticism is beef. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like someone's like, yo, your piece isn't so good. It's like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. you can't, you, and it could, it could have sucked too. But you know, it's all that ego on the line, you know, and that you, you unlearn the ego and you know, I did, I, I, I was in, uh, before I went to, to film school, I was in like, you know, community art class, art school class. And there were some good art teachers and there was like crazy art teachers come in and like, take your painting and fucking chuck it out the window, and shit, <laughs> which I just thought was amazing. That's you know? fucking awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah. Fuck it. Like, dude, come on. Everyone can't, everybody can't fly, baby. Like, you know, some people need to just stop. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. I mean, I paint so much shit and I don't like post any of it. You know, I just, yeah. I, th I think that's the beauty of art too, of being a studio artist is it's selfless. Yeah. It's really, it's for you. It's for yeah. me. Uh, I don't really like to, you know, put it out there and like, I like separating the art from the artist too. That's why I don't care to post my face and do all these things. Like right. just like making it, let it be mine for a bit. Yeah. And once I'm ready to put it out there, sure. Whatever, yeah. you know, if I'm really content or happy with it, or if you sold a piece, if you sold a piece, fuck it, put it out there. It's gone. Yeah. I mean, it's, <laughs> listen, that's, that's the other side of it. It's going to get out there. Hold on. Let me, let me get Maddie on. Get, a, get over my shoulder and, and shoot this beautiful beast right here. Special guest. Special guest, Maddie. Are you, are you framed up, Jason? You remember this guy? Look at him. You remember Jason? Yeah, sorry about the clout FaceTime, man. Does he have his hair tied back? Yeah. Yeah, he's going last samurai with it. Oh, that's nice. He's getting, listen, I'm just going to tell you. Still don't understand anything he's doing. He's getting weirder by the day. It hasn't gotten better. No, it's getting worse. Where I just literally, I'm like, what? What is happening? It's it's bizarre. I so, can, can you? You can't imagine. Are you at Benny's? Yeah, I'm just at Benny's. I'm gonna come over there. Uh, what, tomorrow? Tomorrow. Tomorrow, I'll come over. We'll have some. We'll eat some caviar off your, <laughs> off your ass. I'll pack my foreskin full and shoot it into your mouth. Yes. Okay, I'll, I'll I'll take it because that's that's really Hollywood, baby. I'm ready for it. But like. Eight toonies worth of caviar on my foreskin. Yeah, we all know what a toonie is. What the fuck is a toonie? It's a Canadian Canadian quarter. No, it's a two dollar bill. Oh, okay, copy. All right, Maddie, can you can you can you fart in the hot tub for us real quick? <laughs> you got you got a hot one on deck. He's doing it. Look at those bubbles. I just pooped. He just shit in the hot tub. Very nice. Was that in your ass? 
That wasn't his ass. What are you doing over there? You got a shock rubs fucking crystal dildo? <laughs> Fuck, I should be there with you. What are we doing? I found his dildo in the hot tub, though. Oh my god, what's he up to? Is it a crystal is it a crystal dildo? No, it's like rubber. Well, I think it's one of those workout things. It's like a Yeah, it's a word no. <laughs> Like one of those workout it's ones. A nerf, it's, it's a Nerf missile you shove up, you shoot up your ass. Well, they play, they play underwater missiles. Very cool. All right, Maddie, I'll see you. See, I just wanted, I just wanted, I just wanted you to come on the show one more Who time. Who's studio is that? That's nice. Oh yeah, you got to buy some of this man's art. This is Guillaume, Guillaume Olivier. He's really. You should get in now before he gets too, too hard to get a hold of. Look at this one. I think you need this. Let's get you one of these. We get Benny one of these too. Benny needs some of this stuff. Look at this one. Tell Benny to come. Benny would love this. Let's get, you know what, Benny? We get, you know what? Why don't I just do this? Put me in touch with Benny's person and I'll just send it over there and we'll invoice him. He won't even know. He needs, and we'll do it on the low. Just give, send this guy 50 racks. I'll take a commission. <laughs> I'll take 10% commission and let's go. Cause Benny's not going to know. It's going to end up in next to his like, you know, $24,000 ceramic spoon that he shoves up his butt. Yeah, all that stuff. All right. Ceramics. Just, Everything's about ceramics, bro. Just. Is that big over there? It's big everywhere. Why can't everyone? Like, I feel like if you can't paint, make a ceramic. Make us make a really <laughs> weird, make a really weird goopy ceramic pot, and yeah. and sell or it for eighty thousand dollars. Absolutely, like you know the skill it takes to paint something like that behind you. Yeah, that's actual skill. That's skill. He's good, and and con there's content there too. It's not just he's not just a great illustrator. He's got he's got something to say about the American dream and maximalism. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know all about that. You know about maxing shit out. Uh, Dude, I'll max out right now. I know you. <laughs> I know I'm you're. Right. I'm maxed out at all times. I know you're maxed out at all times. You know. Oh, man, I Drake's love you. House. Isn't Drake's house? Drake's house is maximum of millions. I haven't been in there yet. You've been in Drake's house. You're Canadian. No, but the, 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 you guys should you guys should look up the review of his like. New Toronto house. Okay. Go through it. It's incredible. We'll go through it. We'll do that right now. I'm going to go have diarrhea. Don't diarrhea <laughs> in the pool. Cause then, you know what's the worst? Whenever I get in a hot tub, I feel like I got diarrhea. That's cool. All right. Maddie, love you dearly. And we'll see. I'll see you soon. I'll be over at Casa de Benny tomorrow for who knows what. Yeah, some over. some We're weird things. All day. Okay. All right. Bye. Do you want a pod? Hey. You want a pod? Steve-O pod tomorrow, and now he needs Who's, to reschedule. Oh, Steve-O Steve canceled on you? <laughs> you're literally you're literally, you're literally physically bigger. Does, can I ask you a question? Does Steve-O have a TV show on, on FX going into season two right now? I'm just, it's just a question. Uh, Rolling Stone's review is strong. Man. Just a question. I'm just asking a simple question. Did Steve-O's, did Steve-O's podcast shoot in location in Denmark for season two? No, it didn't. So fuck him, and let's pod. We're gonna come. We're gonna come. We're gonna do a remote pod at Benny's in the in the sauna, the jacuzzi, and in the sauna. It's it's pretty maxed out. What do you think of this bathroom, Guillaume? This is Benny's pool house. Oh, that's sick. Yeah, it's maxed it's the fuck disgusting. out. Can you see it? It's actually disgusting. <laughs> it's disgusting. <laughs> that is horrible. <laughs> it's like the it's like the inside of Trump's asshole. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let, we might as well do this. Yeah, let's let's hear you shit on the pod. Are you getting a good shot of this? We're gonna hear it. Okay. This for no. This is going. Hey everyone, live on the pod. Maddie Matheson's gonna take a shit in Benny's pool house. That looks like. Did you hear that? No, we didn't hear it. It oh. looks like the inside of Ivanka Trump's jewelry box. Congrats, big guy. <laughs> I love the velocity. All right, we're going to... It's like, like a giant sneeze, but it's like... It was like, 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 you know, like a shower faucet where it's like... Falling I don't... Th that's inside. fine. Listen, no... no hard it's not that interesting. <laughs> okay, I love you. I'm going to talk to you soon. I'll see you, I'll see you in a bit. Okay, peace. Ciao. Thanks, buddy. Why did I say ciao? What the fuck's wrong with me? You ever hear things come out of your mouth and you go, why, why did I say chow? Because I'm next to a Frenchman? That's not I think even... all the time. <laughs> I'm always saying shit over Why am I saying chow? I say it every few months. I, say, I tell somebody chow and I go, why did I say that? It's not even like something I should ever be saying to anybody. <laughs> chow? What the fuck? 
the fuck says ciao? I have no business saying ciao to anybody. Let's switch sides, Guillaume. I don't want to. I'm on the. We don't want to be on the wrong is side. That, that 45 minutes is up with the phone call, right? I think yeah, we're good to go. We're good. I know. <laughs> now we have. Are you are you getting tired? No, I mean you know. You're doing great. You're doing great. I know. I'm sorry, I'm late again. Uh, so listen, just just so we're clear. Second half of this is going to be behind the Patreon. So we're going to say some curse, curse words in French Ooh. and in English. Talk about our sex lives. How long have you been with your girlfriend? Two years. Okay, two years. So he's still having sex, probably. Uh, we're going to talk about that. We're talking about the, the ebbs and flows of, of sexual dynamics between, between two loving partners. Are you guys in a monogamous relationship? Mm-hmm. Okay. They're, they're monogamous. They're not, they're not polyamorous, which is such a cool trend. <laughs> Hate it, hate it, and also, and, and your your is your is your girlfriend? Um, is she does she is she is she bisexual? No. Okay, cool. <laughs> two wins, two wins for you. Listen, I'm out here, I'm out here dating people, and every fucking person under a certain age is polyamorous, bisexual. And I'm like, I just, we, let's just fuck, and, and I'll see you in a, in a few years, and never again by by a few years. Um, okay, why did I say that? Let's go. Listen, we're in the Patreon. <laughs> we love you very much. Uh, listen again, I'll say this. If you don't have $5 a month to give to the Power of Truth Angels Patreon, you're really fucking up. $5 a month. Think about what you could spend that on. Oh, nothing. $5 a month. $5. A $5 bill is equivalent to $0.05 cents in 1984. So imagine if you're in a time machine and you built a time machine and you went back in time and went and fucked yourself up the ass for not spending $5 on the fucking Patreon. Come inside. Get in the Patreon. Give us some fucking money so we can keep this show going on because it's getting bigger. It's getting better. And these studio visits... They're going to get even more illustrious, beautiful, condensed, designed, uh, spectacular, sad, and awesome. Who gives a fuck? Just spend the money. Give me, give me $5. What do you want from me? See you in the Patreon. All right.